Hi, Glenn here, back with another video for you. This is episode 92, and this time we're gonna be talking about textures and how we can use them very quickly and easily to create bespoke backgrounds. Now I'm sure there are some of you out there watching this video that will already know the kind of stuff that I'm gonna go through. If you do, just kind of treat it as a bit of a reminder. But for those of you who don't, if you just watch for the next few minutes, you're gonna see how very easily you can use textures to create completely bespoke backgrounds when you've originally photographed your subjects on a gray paper background, like you can see the guys are here. Now before we do that, I just wanna show you one thing first before we actually talk about textures. And that's this picture over here. Again, you can see this model here. She's been photographed on gray paper. Just so you know about the lighting, we had two lights with a strip light on either side of the model and to the front, I think it was about a one meter square softbox with the grid in front of it, but with the outer diffusion taken off. So as the light comes through, it hits the grid and that's when you get all these nice kind of shapes and patterns on the floor with all the shadows. But what I'm gonna talk about now is just literally how to use the gray paper because that's really important when it comes to textures later on. So here's our model, Jessie. Here is a picture of a door, uh, which, was I, which I photographed over at um, Heidelberg Castle in Germany. Now when we do compositing, ordinarily we think we have to do lots of intricate cutting out using things like refine edge, and it can get quite tricky when we're picking up hair. However, when we photograph somebody on a gray background, let's just take this background now, drag it over into our picture containing Jessie. When we photograph people on the gray background, we can do things a heck of a lot quicker, but the background does have to be solid like it is here with this door. So over in the layers panel, you can see the first layer is Jesse, uppermost layer is the actual door here. Now, if I wanted to make it look as if Jesse had that door behind her, rather than doing cutting out, because I've used gray when I photographed her, I can just use a blend mode. So on the layer here containing the door, I'm gonna change the blend mode from normal to something like overlay. And you can see straight away, we're not actually that far from having her already composited into the scene. Now all I need to do here is just add something like a layer mask, get a brush with a black foreground color and just quickly very, very paint away areas where we can see that the actual texture of the door is showing through on Jessie's skin in particular and on her hair and a little bit on the wings. But you can see how quickly I'm doing this here not paying much attention while I'm chatting away to you folks, but you can see it's pretty much she's in there. Whoop, let's zoom back in. Pretty much she's now composited in the scene and it's taken literally about a minute. Now we can spend time doing the interesting stuff, adding the effects, the lighting, the color and so on. But if I zoom in, take a look at the wings here. I'll just take paint off a little bit there. Can you see how we've not even used Refine Edge, but all these intricate bits of the feather, all of that has come through fine. All the hair is fine, but the great thing is if we just zoom down to the bottom here, look at the shadows on the floor that have hit Jesse, the shadows going across here. If I turn the background layer off now, you can see they're exactly the same. So one of the hardest things we do when we composite is actually paint in the shadows once we've actually done the cutting out and put the person into the scene. With this effect, when we use gray to photograph them on, put the background above them, then use an overlay blend mode, or maybe even soft light, but the effect isn't quite so contrasty then, the original shadows stay in there. So we don't even have to think about doing them. But that's a little bit of a sidetrack. Let's go back over now and talk about textures because it's pretty much a similar kind of thing that we're gonna do. So here's the picture of our two guys. We've got Mac on the left and Sam on the right. These guys uh, belong to an organization called the Bearded Villains. Uh, and here's the final picture. But you can see, if I just get rid of all these layers here, you can see that originally we've just got the two guys who've been photographed on the gray background. So I just wanna add some texture to it. And texture you can get from all manner of places. If I just go to File and Open, I can show you that I've got loads and loads of textures saved already onto my computer. Uh, Photoshop Bits and Bobs is the folder I keep them in. Let's just double click on that. And then we've got textures here. So you can see as I scroll through, loads and loads of textures. And these are photographs of floors, of walls, of doors, of brick, of dust, you name it. All manner of different textures that we can use in our pictures. If I just click on this one, just bring it forward. You can see that this one here is just a bit of marble that's been photographed, which is great for adding onto, tech, onto a picture later on. 
Another place that you can get them from is from the Adobe add-ons. Now, if I just go over to the website, let's go to, over to Chrome and Adobe add-ons. Now, I'll put the actual URL, the web address, in the description part of this video, so make sure you check it out. But in here, we've got loads of different things that we can actually either get for free or add into our Photoshop to allow us to do many, many different things. And one of the things that's available to us is this one where loads of textures. So if I go to the search area, type in texture, this is gonna bring up lots of the add-ons that have some kind of texture in with them. And the one we're talking about today is this one just here. This is one that's available to those of you who subscribe to the Creative Cloud. Uh, it's a free one to download, but don't worry if you don't subscribe to the Creative Cloud. If you're on something like Photoshop CS6 or, or maybe a, an earlier version, you've got a version over here, which you can also download as well. So you're not being excluded. It's for everybody to make use of. But I've got this one over here, the one that's called the Fly Taster for the subscriber. And when you actually get that and install it, you'll notice that you can actually get hold of of it when you go to the uh, window menu extensions and it will show here so you can see Adobe Paper Texture Pro when you first then use it you'll notice it comes up over on the right hand side here and can you see this little fly icon with the blue background this is where all those textures are actually in uh, embedded now into Photoshop you see all of them different different ones here now if I wanted to add these onto the background, all I simply need to do is just maybe just click on one of them and what you'll find is it creates a brand new layer, it adds a layer mask onto it as well and it also applies the blend mode. If I just change that back to normal you can see here's the solid texture but they've just simply now by changing to overlay you can see that it starts to attach itself to the actual grey paper background. Obviously it's over the subjects as well but all you can simply do there like we did with Jet see the girl there where they put the door behind is just get a black brush and paint it off the guys so that you're only going to leave it on the actual background now in this example here what I actually did do was you can see just here I actually made a selection of the guys so it's very very quick and easy for me now as I add textures to remove them off now you'll notice some of these textures do in fact have some color in them as well now one word of warning if you're going to add a texture that has color onto a gray wall it's going to look a little bit funky so what I tend to do is just desaturate it so when you're clicked on the actual layer container texture just go to image adjustments and then desaturate take the color out of it and then you're going to be left with a nice simple texture on that back wall and already we can start to see that it's building up there but you don't have to stop with one texture in the final image of these guys here I went back in chose another texture let's just go for maybe this one here and again we can see this color in there that's now a bit of a almost like a material effect there but it might work but again let's just click on the thumbnail image adjustments desaturate obviously there's a keyboard shortcut there as well click on that to remove the color out of it you can see straight away that makes it better and then we can actually start playing around with opacity to bring down those kind of uh, the texture effect just there as well so you can start to build them up put as many as you want in there to create a, a completely bespoke background now if I want to take it off the guys here I could build up many many different textures in here then I would just simply highlight so that all those textures are selected and then go to the fly out menu on the right hand side and go new group from layers and we'll just call that texture and then I'll simply add a layer mask to it. Now the layer mask is white, which means we can still see the effect. We can still see it on the guys there. But if I again go to where my selection was saved, hold down my command key and click on that little channel there, you can see my selection is now active. Again, this is just purely a reminder here. And then all I need to do now is just go to edit, fill, and fill that selected area with black to remove or to hide that effect off the guys. And then we'll just deselect. So you can see you can start to very, very quickly build up those texture layers just there like so. Keep going until you get the kind of look you want. So that's one thing you can do with it. And just as a little bonus before we finish off, here's one little thing that I remember seeing years ago. Crimey, it must have been about, crimey, blimey I mean. <laughs> must have been about 10 years ago when I first went to Photoshop World in Las Vegas. And I saw photographer Eddie Tapp show this and he called it cookie lighting. And all he does is he goes to add a curves layer Go to the upper right hand corner and drag it down just a bit so that your picture starts to darken, something like this. Okay, we'll close that down. Then we get a brush. We've got a black foreground color. 
Let's just make sure there's no settings in there that are gonna make the brush behave a bit odd. And then all we simply do is just quickly dab down in various parts of the picture with this brush. So we can click down that size, let's make it a little bit smaller, little dabs like this all over the place. And all that's doing is just making it so that the lighting isn't even. Obviously later on we can add a vignette, but by adding all these little kind of little dabs of black here to bring back the original picture, it just adds a little bit more interest. If I turn that on and off, you can see the light's not even, it's the shadows that make the picture interesting. And that's just a very quick, simple way that you can do something that Eddie called cookie lighting. If we just look at the actual layer mask, that's all we're doing. We're just hiding the dark parts by putting those little black dots all over it. So there you go, real simple, quick way of using textures. It's definitely something that's worth doing. It's actually cheaper than buying textured backgrounds because then you can just do whatever you want to your background now and make a brand new different looking one every single time. Uh, you've also got the compositing trick in there. Definitely give it a go. And for those of you who want to know what kind of gray you should get, just get a gray. Don't worry too much about how light or how dark it is because you as the photographer can, oh, can control how much light is on it anyway. So you can make it as dark or as light as you want to. Don't forget, I'll put the actual address where you can get those Adobe add-ons in the description part of the video. If you haven't subscribed already to this channel, please make sure you do so. Just click on that subscribe button. It's just a real quick way of giving us a bit of support. And then that's it. Pretty much, I shall uh, finish now and I'll see you next time.